Today we will be analyzing data tables. Have you ever wondered how can we analyze when we see figures like this? Tables with numbers like this? And perhaps when you can see spreadsheets or some Excel files that have data in it and we don't, don't know how to interpret them. Or sometimes we see how our economy works in the stock market, but we don't know any of what those numbers mean. Our objective is that at the end of this video, you will be able to 1. Identify the parts of a data table 2. Analyze data from a given data table and 3. Solve problems involving data tables. Hello, I am Jofit Vargas, but you can just call me Teacher Jofit. Data. What is data? Data are facts and information. Data is taken from different processes like gathering online surveys, we have also online polls in which sometimes Facebook pops up into your screen and your social media and is trying to gather data from you regarding your interest or what kind of people you want to meet with. Data is also taken from feedback forms in order to improve services on hotels and other um, companies. Also, data is present when you are trying to elect your class officers inside the classroom. And this is just the first step on a statistical research method. Collection. In order to present and analyze and later on conclude and interpret the data, we have this research method. Number one, collection. Second, we're going to organize the data. Then we will present it. Then the data presented will be analyzed so that we can interpret it and later make our conclusion. As what we have discussed earlier, collection is made from surveys, polls, interviews, feedbacks, and other data gathering methods. And those data that is being collected is organized by tallying and summarizing, in which it is presented into tables and graphs. So we will start off with this There are two ways to represent data. First one is by tables. And second one is by graphs. Tables directly present data in numbers according to the variables or categories presented, while on the other end, graphs present data in a visual form such as lines, shapes, pictures, with the variables and categories presented. But in this video, we will focus on tables. What are the parts of a table? As you can see here, we have, first and foremost, our table number and our title. If you have a series of tables in your document or in a presentation, you need to put a table number in order for you to identify easily what specific table one is referring to. The title gives an overall description of what the contents in your table is. Next, we have this stub or row heading. The stub gives you a generalized, in a generalized form or a term for the following categories, which are your stub entries or row entries. Like for example, if you have sports, then your stub entries will be classified into basketball, volleyball, badminton, or any that comes into your mind as long it is part of your study. Description or column heading can 
is presented in 3 but can be presented in 2 or 1 depending upon the uh, generalized or specified form of your variables. The body itself contains the data in which under which row or column the body is uh, presented or is presented by the numbers specifically by the numbers of how many or what is the measure of each specified variable total rows this uh, this total rows is commonly presented especially when it comes to score which shows the sum of the scores within the row or sometimes uh, the average if Example, a teacher is trying to, to create a summary of the grades of the students and at the end will be the average of all the performance of the students. In this total column, it provides the sum of all the data within the column. Just like, for example, expenses of uh, specified um, I mean specified expenses within the company. So the total expenses will be this number of dollars or any currency within the, um, within the country. Source note, if in case your table is derived from a study of a certain uh, group of people who are conducting the study, we will provide our source note and other footnotes if in case we have some data that is being fused into tables. So how will we use the table? So number one, read the title and labels. It is very important for us to read the title and labels because we may be asked with a certain question, but we may use a different table so that in case our answers will be wrong. Number two, analyze the data. It is very important for us to analyze the data because of using the proper row and column, okay, with the improper use of the row and column, we might come up with a different answer. And three, use that data in answering the questions. Take note, do not use what is not asked. So, let's practice. Here is example number one. Preferred snacks of students on recess. Question number one. How many male students prefer sandwiches? So, we have to analyze the data. Let us consider what variables are considered in this question. So, we have male and sandwiches. So, male is in this column, sandwiches in this, is in this row. So, as we can see, five belong to the intersection. Our answer is five. Let's proceed to question number two. How many female students prefer fruits? Okay, so as you can see here, this is female. This is the column of female and this is the column of fruits. So what had, what number had into the answer section? So we have three. Number three, how many students prefer chips? Now, this time, students are not categorized into male and female, but rather they are fused. That means three and six, both male and female, like chips. So three plus six equals nine. Number four, how many more students prefer chips than fruits? So students again, we already know that 3 plus 6 equals 9. So fruits, we have 3 plus 3 equals 6. So 9 minus 6 equals 3. And the last question, which snack is the most preferred by students? Remember, let us not hasten to answer 
the question or you might mislook here male as five oh the answer is five and then that's your answer no it should not be we have to analyze each data carefully for the male we have five okay which knock is most preferred by students for the male we have five female four so sandwiches is nine chips three plus six is also nine fruits three and three is six so we have a tie sandwiches and chips so our answer is sandwiches and chips here is our example two table two population figures in selected countries in year 2000 and 2010 and the respective land area in square miles so here as shown in the table this is the counties while well, this is the sub counties adam bell cook davis and evans here on the column header we have the population in which it is being compared year 2000 and 2010 land area in square miles so in this body we have the data here is the population and here is the data on land area in square miles let's proceed to our question which county showed the greatest percent of increase in population from 2000 to 2010 so we have to consider population no land area is being asked here so this last column on the land area we are going to disregard it next increase percent of increase before knowing the percent we have to consider which among the counties had increased in the population so let's start off first with adams Adams from 11,000 to 128 increased to 15,295. For Bell County, 25,199 going 22,707. That means the population had decreased. For the Cook County, 6,532 going 6,518. If we look up at the thousands and hundreds place, they're almost the same. But when, if we compare to the place value on the tens and ones, 32 is greater than 18. That means that the population had decreased. For the Davis County, from 82,204 going 90,834, that means the population had increased. And on Evans County from 139,510 going 130,748 that means that the population had decreased that means we have only two counties to consider we have Adams and Davis is getting their difference enough no it's not enough because what we are being asked here is the percent of increase we might say that 11 going to 15 has only around uh, 4,000 in estimate while here in davis going to 90 we have 8,000 in increase but it is not the difference that is being considered, but the percent of increase. So let's start off first with Adams first. Adams. Adams County had 15,295 during year 2000 and 11,128 in the year 2010. So the difference or the increase in the population is 4,167 divided by 11,128. Why 11,128? Why not 15? Okay, let us take note when we are considering the percent of increase or even decrease, we have to consider the original amount. 
okay because the original amount is where we compare the change of the of the population as shown here on the table so 11,128 will be our divisor so 4,167 is the result of or the difference from these numbers you may check it in your calculator divided by 11,128 the result is 374,000 or we may sometimes read it as 0 0.374 Converting it into percent since we are being asked of percent, so we multiply it by 100 or simply move to decimal places to the right, we have 37.4%. And that goes for Adams County. Next, let us proceed to Davis. Davis County has 90,834 during 2010 and 82,204 during the year 2000 so we will subtract it the answer is 8,630 so there is an 8,000 increase in the population divided by 82,000 is the original population during the year 2000 so we divide it the answer is 105,000 or we may read it as 0 0.05 converting it into percent we multiply it by 100 or move two decimal places to the right, we have 10.5%. So let us compare 37 and 4% and 10 and 5%. That means Adams County showed the greatest percent in increase in population from year 2000 to 2010. Now you try. I am going to give you a series of multiple choice questions and you are going to choose your answers from the options given. Let us start. So, using the same table as previously discussed, population figures in selected counties in year 2000 and 2010 and the respective land area in square miles. Our question is, on average, how many people were there per square mile in Bell County in 2010? A. 8 B. 9 C. 10 D. 11 We are going to discuss how we will we derive the answer. So, as our solution, we have 2010 population divided by land area in square miles. Now, it is a common mistake among students that when it is being asked how many people were there in 2010, we will answer there 22,707, but disregarding that the question involves per square mile. Now, the land area here is in square miles. We already have to consider this data. So the total land area in Bell County is 2,523, but the question B is being asked is per square mile. That means our data involves this 22,707 and 2,523. So what are we going to do? We divide. So, 22,707 divided by 2,523, you may check in your calculator, and the answer is 9. So, the correct answer here is letter B. Did you get it right? Yay! Let's proceed to the next question. Using the same table, our question is, to what nearest percent? What was the percent of decrease in Evan County's population from year 2000 to 2010? Okay, as we have discussed previously, Evans County had decreased from 139,510 to 130,748. So the options are 
A, 4.54%, B, 5.89%, C, 6.28%, and D, 7.04%. So we are going to use the same solution as we had discussed previously. The 139,510 will be subtracted by 130,748 as to know what had decreased and divided by the original population during year 2000. So, this is the difference, 8,762, then divided by 139,510. We got the answer, 0.0628. We are going to move to decimal places to the right. So, our answer is letter C, 6 and 2800%. Did you get it right? Okay, very good. Now you are ready for a different data. We have here table 3. Percent of 3-year-old children with school readiness skills for the years 2004 and 2010. Okay, so this is our stub readiness skills, our categories, or sub stubs are recognizes all letters, counts to 20 or higher, writes own name, or reads or pretends to read. So these are the years uh, in comparison, 2004 and 2010, and this is in percent. And we all know when it comes to percent, that means per hundreds. So our question is, if 100 children were surveyed in each year, which category shows the least percent of increase from 2004 to 2010? A. Recognizes all letters. B. Counts to 20 or higher. C. Writes or name. Or D. Reads or pretends to read. So since if 100 children, that means per 100 children, so this is already by hundreds, we have to study each carefully. So let's have our solution. A. That is recognized all letters. 17 minus 11, so we have 6%. B, 47 minus 37%, we have 10%. C, 34 minus 22% equals 12%. And D, we have 67 minus 66% equals 1%. Going back to the question, which category showed the least percent of increase from 2004 to 2010. So which among here is the least? So we have 1% and that refers to letter D, reads or pretends to read. Do you have the same answer? Okay, marvelous, amazing. Last question. A community had 353 year old children in 2010. If the chart is representative of the community, how many were able to write their own name? Hmm. So, we are discussing only 2010. We have to disregard this 2004. Going to the options A, 34, B, 97. C, 119, or D, 134. Which of the following is your answer? Okay, let us discuss if we have the same answer. So our solution is, we are going to consider the 34 to the 350. So write or name has 34%. So 350 times 34% can also be written by 350 times 3400. Okay. So multiply, we have 119. Okay, the correct answer is letter C. Did you get it right? 
Okay, so now you are able to analyze data. Congratulations! You have now completed this lesson. You can be able to understand better our next lesson, which are pictographs. Now, this is just the beginning. There are still some things we have to go further for the rest of these videos. And before that, I would like to share with you a simple Bible verse. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. James 1 verse 5.